Welcome back to a nice outdoor edition of Switch to Linux, but we are going to be talking about some computers here. So I wanted to get a little bit, um, I don't know, it's one of those moments, you know, those times you just kind of got to move on in life. The very first computer that I've ever purchased and completely wiped entirely and went with Linux, I bought this guy at a Best Buy for... 350 bucks if I remember correctly and this was right around the time I started my channel so we're talking I think I got it actually up in Erie on Christmas vacation in um, 2016 so that's how old this computer is now as far as performance goes this computer has not shown any degradation of performance it performs very 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 well um, there are downsides to it now this is a Dell Inspirian uh, 15, 7000 series. It has a core i5 processor and I forget which generation, but going back over almost 10 years now, um, that, is, uh, that is where, uh, you know, you can see where it's showing its age. Now, the challenges I have with it is the hinge over here is a little bit messed up. Not a major deal. I have actually just in the habit of just holding down tight on that particular side when I open it up. We've also developed a small crack in the screen up here on the digitizer. It is a touch screen. Um, I could actually replace that for 60 bucks. I could probably replace the chassis for about the same. I don't know. The one big issue on this computer though is that the only high speed USB port is wonky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And overall, it's, I just kind of wanted to get this computer, like I wanted to be ready for this computer to leave. Now, this is my primary work computer when I'm not in the van. This guy here manages my business books, it manages uh, the web design stuff, and just a lot of other multi-purpose things related to running my business. So I've been keeping an eye on something I could replace that with, but I didn't want to spend a whole ton. I just wanted something that's kind of mid-range model. And so I picked up this MSI that I found at a pawn shop for $275. Yes, this is a 12th generation i7 with 16 gigs of RAM. We have uh, a high speed USB port and a USB C port. I think those are both USB uh, 3.2. We have a full HDMI power uh, whole headphone jack. And on the other side, we have a micro uh, SD card and we have two USB 2 ports. Now, the big downside about these MSIs is the RAM is soldered in. It is 16 gigs of RAM. It is an upgrade to my 8 gigs in the other one. And the i7 is definitely a better processor than the uh, i5. And this one is a 12th generation, meaning it is fairly new. And these computers actually do go for, I think, 600 new. So it's not a super high-end, super premium system. The RAM being soldered in is uh, definitely a downside. But if I just need a simple laptop that's going to allow me to do mid-range work, we're not, this is a streaming computer, although with these specs, it probably can be. Uh, and overall, this has been a good computer for $270. We have one fundamental problem. I wanted to clone the operating system on the old laptop onto the new one. I could have simply reinstalled and moved files over. I could have done things, but I just wanted to see how could I get that operating system over. Of course, there is Clonezilla. Picked up a Western Digital Blue one terabyte for $66 at Walmart. Um, I've heard some people say these are good. I've heard some people say they're bad. We're just going to make sure we have a good data backup strategy as usual. And now we're just running Clonezilla. And I've just kept the old hard drive inside of this computer. I don't plan on taking it out or adjusting it. We're merely making a clone onto this guy over here. Once that clone is done, simply pop that into the computer and we'll be set to go. Coming up on the end of this. Now, this is not going to be 100% done, but we are we have probably less than five minutes left here. So you can see our time remaining is about two minutes, and you can see this whole process only took about 49 minutes. So that's how long it took to clone this. Now, one more thing I will say here. Use a externally powered USB 3.0 hub when you do this. If you're plugging your 
SSD with your um, adapter directly into the USB port. Power needs to transfer from the USB port. This is going to get really hot. And that transfer rate, which has been holding close to 20 this whole time, is going to drop down to like less than one gigabyte a minute. And this will take hours and hours to do. So this is the secret to transferring if you're using these USB adapters. Use an externally powered USB 3 hub. That's what we are doing to make this guy happen to go quickly. So after it's done with this, it's going to do just a couple more cleanup steps and then that'll be done and we'll be ready to test the drive. We cloned the system. It only took about 45 minutes to do. Not a big deal. Now, I did pick up a new SSD for this. The uh, hard drive that is in installed in these is a 500, um, uh, 500 gig and I wanted to go to a terabyte, especially since I have a terabyte in the other computer there as well. So I went out and for 60 bucks, I bought a Western Digital Blue one terabyte drive, clone the drive onto that, pop it in, and I'm all excited to just be my, right in my other computer. Yeah, the old computer was installed with a legacy BIOS. Legacy BIOS was dropped in the Core i processors after the 11th generation. So 11th generation and on, you have to do EFI. So I needed to get the existing system running without compromising everything inside of here. And that really was what my challenge happened to be. And it took me three or four days to work through all of the steps because not only do we have this drive, we also have an encrypted drive. It ended up being a lot easier than I anticipated and it was a lot easier than all of the various weird steps that I did to try and pull it off without. <laughs> Sometimes guys, the easiest solutions are actually the steps that you need to do. So I'm gonna walk through the process here. Uh, all you're gonna need to do for doing this, now this is a, a Linux Mint system. So what I needed to do is just download the latest Linux Mint installer media. That boots on this just fine. And by the way, one more thing before I get into that system, uh, the even the wireless card in here is a little wonky. It doesn't work with every, uh, with every, um, uh, uh, Linux kernel. Uh, overall, after pushing a few updates, it is now working on everything I tried it on. It was not working on the original system until I pushed the upgrade to a uh, 5.15, I think, uh, that was on uh, in this Linux Mint as 20.3. So I've upgraded everything from there and it works just fine. Now, Here's the steps that you needed to do in order to get this to work, and they were actually easier than I thought. Now, the complication is the encrypted drive. So I need to boot this computer, making sure it's EFI, which is not a problem because this thing does not boot legacy. Uh, curiously, you can set it to boot legacy and then the whole system constantly crashes. It's a big nightmare. Don't do that. <laughs> So, and it wasn't until I dug through forums to find out that yes, after the 11th generation, they stopped supporting the, um, the legacy boot altogether. Uh, so I get download the latest uh, media, which was the uh, 22.1. And I booted the system under that, verified we're running under EFI. And then with the one terabyte SSD inside of here, the next step you need to do is you need to decrypt this and mount it not going in and doing it with the file manager like some people would be inclined to do, especially people like me who prefer to work in the GUI when I can. You can't do it that way. You have to go in and you actually have to use uh, the terminal. So you're using crypt setup, you're unlocking, unlocking the Lux drive, you're mounting it onto the partition there. Then what you're gonna need to do is connect this guy to the internet and then load up that boot repair. And then the boot repair is going to, um, update itself and then go through all of the steps. And then sometimes it's going to work on the background and sometimes it's going to give you the steps you need to do to copy and paste the commands into the terminal, wait for things to move. Now, I will stress one thing here. I thought I would be able to get in there and CH root into the system and work with everything. It ended up just being a complicated mess. And if you attempt to CH root into the system prior to running the boot repair at all, it will completely crash uh, your terminal. Um, and so make sure that you're not doing that. Just uh, decrypt the encrypted partition, mount it, the file system in, and run your boot repair. Then once your boot repair says, hey, we have some options here, I clicked on the advanced options to verify everything, toggle the few buttons around, particularly that data collection thing. That's a no-no for me. So I turned that guy off and then ran the boot repair. And then as soon as I did that, now 
once I got that rebooted the system, now it says, hey, boot into Ubuntu. Okay, whatever. So we booted into Ubuntu, which is really uh, cleverly disguised as Linux Mint 20.3. I found that my wireless card wasn't working. My uh, external HDMI cable wasn't working. Um, my, um, uh, what is it? My uh, touchpad wasn't working. And I even lost my dog, my wife, and my car in the mist process as well. But, you know, that's okay. It's Linux. We can deal with this. So I plugged the guy into the Ethernet port using my nice external USB um, USB 3 to uh, Ethernet system. Fortunately, the USB ports worked still. Awesome. So I went ahead and did that. Ran system updates. I updated to the latest available kernel in the 20.3 uh, 20 branch, which was the kernel 515. Reboot of the system, and absolutely everything works, including the grub menu. Now it says Linux Mint 20.3. Haha, <laughs> bonus. Uh, and so that is how I got this MSI laptop. Um, set up completely working as an absolute clone of this my old work computer so this guy here will probably i'm gonna probably leave it sit in my storage for another year or so while i uh while we work on some stuff and then uh um maybe next year we'll pull that guy out after this guy runs we have a good set of backups on it maybe i'll turn that into some type of server or do something else with it that's not my day-to-day. -day. So, you know, I can actually open this guy up and use it without worrying about this or a wonky USB port or things like that. So there is my fun journey over the last couple of weeks. As far as my overall process and thoughts on this computer, if you are looking for a budget laptop, this is a good budget laptop. So far, it has worked out well for me. I was able to use this to process um, the one of the, I think a couple of last videos we did for the Christian channel, I actually did all that processing on this, just using my internal hard drive from that computer as an external on this worked out fine. I played around with a few different things. Everything on it worked out really well. The computer is a really good system. It lacks that, uh, probably lacks repairability, probably lacks the upgrade capabilities that you might want. Uh, but overall it is cheap enough that if you need a good budget laptop that works, these MSI laptops are pretty good. And this particular one is an MSI Modern 15 B12M. Not a bad find for uh, under 300 bucks at a pawn shop. So with that guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts uh, down below. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.